let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. I am Carrie Desberg. I am fractional CMO for Partner Optimizer. So excited to be able to say that. Uh, I've been really fortunate to have worked in the channel for a long, long time, and it's always exciting. I mean, what a huge path to market when 75% of revenue or more is going through the channel. What a big impact we always have on what happens to businesses everywhere. And, you know, today is one of those days where I find uh, more exciting than other days. Uh, it's so rare when you're in a technology company to really be on the cusp of a new technology and the chance to really disrupt something in such a different way. Um, I was I was on a sabbatical for a family um, issue and a need. And as I came back and was looking at what I wanted to do, uh, I ran into Gina, who, Dina, who I have worked with for any number of years and run into in the channel. And um, uh, I, I, it was such professional kismet to have the chance to um, join forces with her and help bring the news that we're talking about today uh, and to really tackle the problem that we're talking about today. So powerful. So equally exciting are the speakers that we have today. Let me introduce them. Janet Shines, uh, if you're in the channel, um, very few people are as omnipresent as uh, she is. She is the CEO and uh, co-founder of JS Group. Uh, for those of you who don't know them, they're a go-to-market consultancy that is dedicated to driving results um, throughout the channel and that go to, an important go-to-market. Um, awards, 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 top 10 women in technology, top 50 technology influencers, channel influencer of the year, um, just so many awards that really are just a nod to how how much of a role she's played in the channel for so long. Um, such great channel chops, leadership positions in Office Depot and in Verizon and Motorola. So uh, Janet really just is so excited to be working with you and so excited to have you be a part of the conversation that we are having today. Thrilled to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Um, what is hotter than AI and machine learning? Very little. It's driving everything. It's driving all of our businesses. It's driving the market. Uh, our next speaker, uh, Mike Dillinger, he has a PhD in AI and machine learning. Um, some amazing uh, technology companies in his background, uh, technical lead for taxonomies and ethologies at LinkedIn, uh, technical lead for LinkedIn and eBay's uh, first machine learning systems. Uh, how cool is that? And, you know, really key in helping build the in intelligence behind LinkedIn Navigator. I'm sure you've heard all about that. Um, and he's also been president of the Association for Mat Machine Translation in the Americas um, and has taught more at more than a dozen um, universities globally on machine learning. So, Mike, uh, love having you here, love your chops uh, and the value that you've added to this platform. It's really incredible. Thanks, Kerry. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. And uh, lastly, Dina. Uh, she is the CEO and uh, founder of Partner Optimizer, and she is a partner data futurist. If anybody knows what is happening with partner data and where it's going and uh, has the chops to build a platform like we're going to be talking today, it is her. Uh, she's been leading uh, and consulting with B2B tech company partnerships uh, throughout her career, uh, like Janet, just so many awards for top women leaders, uh, channel influencers, uh, women the channel, we we would be spending the the rest of the uh, the session um, talking about all those awards. There are just so many and so impressive, Dina. Um, before uh, founding um, Partner Optimizer, she was CEO and founder of Critical Digital Data Solutions. Uh, they were a uh, cloud-based data storage solutions company. So Dina, um, I'm really so proud to be working with you. So excited for this. So excited about this conversation. So let us dig in um, with this illustrious group and um, 
it's just going to take a minute for our slides to catch up with me. So Janet, we're going to kick it off with Janet and talk about really what is the difference between a chief channel officer and what is really inquired to go from, you know, where popularity and being known and being on the stage was really enough to carry you through and what is different about being a chief ecosystem officer and what is demanded of you. Uh, Dean is going to talk about what current solutions have been out there and why they have been failing the market and what needs to change. Uh, happy and excited to turn it over to um, Mike to talk about what's in our brain. And then we're going to go back to show you a little bit about our new platform and then we'll close and take questions. So without any further ado, let's go. Um, Janet, I am going to turn it over to you. Just let me know when you're ready for the next slides. You got it. Thanks, everybody. And I'm excited to talk today a little bit about what I see as the state of the channel. And I'm going to put a high level kind of placeholder on it to say, I think the channel is data deprived and in need of acceleration. Now, you may be listening and think, wait, I've accelerated stuff where I'm working. I see folks like Frank and Jean and Juan and a whole bunch of my friends out there and Danny who have all probably can say, hey, I did that, Rosie, right? I could go on and on. Um, but in reality, there's a lot of acceleration that's left on the table because we don't have the right strategic plan or we don't have the right data. And so I'm going to dig in just for a couple minutes um, and talk a little bit about that. And uh, Carrie, you can go to the next slide. I feel like I should have a cool thing to say when we say next slide. So I think I'm just going to say partner optimizer every time All right. um, as we go to our next slide. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things that I think is really um, truly important is that we're in a new reality. We're kind of at a point of no return. And what it is, is the customer acquisition game, because we all have to remember, even if we're in the channel, no matter where we are, right, whether we're a vendor, whether we're a partner, whether we're an ISV, a distributor, it is about the customer, the end user customer using the solutions that we build by the partner for. And the customer acquisition game, as we know it, has really changed forever. The customer acquisition game now, very much based on customer experience, and that customer experience is most times based on companies flawlessly using data to create a personalized experience. A lot of that digitization of that experience happened during COVID, but we're seeing the outcomes of that, right? We really expect as consumers to have a different um, engagement now. Um, and we'll move to the next slide, uh, Carrie, as I finish up this thought. And so when you think about that kind of point of no return, we need to accept that because of that, the channel plan that worked in the past, right? Where if you're a vendor listening, your channel plan was likely, you know, I'm gonna find a bunch of partners that I've known or that I know other people that are successful with or that are maybe successful with a competitor. Um, I'm gonna spend a bunch of time getting a couple of them to sign up. Um, and then I'm gonna hope and pray and push and spiff uh, until they close things. And, and that's not really sufficient to win anymore. Um, in fact, that's a very rear view mirror kind of way of looking at the world. Just because a partner was successful last year um, actually has very little to do um, with them being successful this year for you, particularly if you're a new solution, right? They may have had one Bluebird sale or they may have done very well with a competitor, but they're not that interested in bringing you on. And so when we think about it, it's time for a new kind of power play where you go after partners who are both deeply connected to the connected tissue of the customer experience that I talked about a moment ago, but also deeply connected with you, that they're not just um, willing to work with you, they're also able. And that's one of the things I love about working with Dina and the team. You can go to an event, have 50 people meet with you that are partners, sign up, right? They're all excited. Nothing happens. Six months later, you're in your ops review. and your CRO and CEO are beating you up because you haven't made any sales, even though you swore you were going to if you spent all those money at those events. Um, and that was because you met partners who were willing to talk to you, willing to see you, willing to lie to you, that they were going to be a big partner for you. Um, but were they truly able? And that's one of the things that we use for all of our consulting clients. We work with Dina and the team at Partner Optimizer to say, okay, willing and able, and really the ideal partner that I need and want. And that speeds up the time to market. So um, as we go to the next slide, I want everybody, as we're talking about that, to really think about this, this in, a, in a great way. And you may be listening and saying, you're fine with just you know, the partners in SMB and they've got it, it's transactional. But 
the reality is the partner voice is bigger now than ever before. They're in 91% of deals at some level. So even if you feel like, hey, for my biggest deals, I'm selling direct. So it's okay if I just have coincidental partners. You still need to win over on average seven partners that are in an enterprise or mid-market accounts, parts, binds, and wallet share to win. And that's changing our ecosystem realities, right? Because they may not even join our program, but we have to know them, be able to appeal to them, be able to want them to work with us. So on the next slide, as we think about that, right? End user customers changing, channels changing, and how the channel engages. Well, you know, we used to see one partner in a deal, now we may see five, six, or seven. And so as things have changed in the channel, you as a leader need to catch up. We've got new solutions and services, which are driving new channel partner profiles, things that were born in the cloud, not only sold by our legacy prem-based partner. We even evolved go-to-market. I mentioned this before, these data-rich engagements for positive experiences. This is coming into the channel partner community as well and changing their go-to-market. We also have a psychographic change in the channel partner community. They're more digital. We're seeing next-gen partners come in and have a new idea of their value and how their value is going to work in the business. And they have new backgrounds and experiences. And then finally, we see a C-suite revolution with the channel value evolving, depending on what type of CEO, CRO, uh, chief customer officer, chief experience officer you have, the channel can become a necessary evil or a pillar for growth. And so the bottom line in the past, and, and uh, Carrie mentioned this at the beginning, when channel chiefs were like, hey, it was good. I'm popular. Everybody knows me. I'm going to hit my sales target and I'm good. It's not enough anymore. There's a more complex ecosystem play at play here and data-driven businesses that deliver innovation through partnerships that have unique channel go-to-market plans that have unique ecosystem first strategies are now the ones that win. And that's why we see, for example, um, when you look at chief partner officer or chief um, ecosystem officer, the vast majority of those folks have not been the channel chief because the channel chief has been seen as the popular person who hits a sell to or sell through or sell with target, not the person who is designing the partnerships of the future for the company based on technology, based on um, integration, based on verticalization, et cetera. And that's what has to change. And how you change that is data. So here on the next slide, as we think about that, as we think about this evolution, we have to question ourselves and say, look, why data, why now, right? Well, the first thing is we know, we have a customer information revolution. People are now expecting that you know a lot about them by the time you talk to them. In fact, I had this fascinating conversation with a next-gen partner last week for a next-gen research service uh, that we're doing here at, uh, at my firm. And they said something so meaningful on the call, which was that in the past, people communicated to get information. You would have a meeting, you would sit at the table, people would tell you about themselves. Now you get information so you can communicate. And I thought, boy, that's the clearest harbinger of a data-driven world, right? So we're having this evolution in the channel partner community where frankly, they anticipate you know about their business, understand their business and know whether or not their business fits with your business prior to having a conversation. Nothing is more powerful, I think, than being able to say to a partner, you do or don't fit um, the profile we're looking for. And sometimes the very partners who you say you don't fit, right? Say, what do I need to do to fit and start evolutionizing their business, right? But, but the reality is the wrong partners, you know, really hurt us. And so what we need to do with data is we need to predict the next best everything. Now, Partner Optimizer helps us predict the next best partner, right? We see great success, 40% faster to market when we use the tool help select the right partners. And that's why data matters. Um, and so as we move to the next slide and we think about this, why data and why it matters, you also have to look at the other side of that, which is the high cost of not having data. So data, particularly data on your partners, what do they sell? Where do they market? What do they really do? What are they certified on, right? Is a compass for your business channel. And without the right data, you're a little bit like a ship without a compass, right? You're lost. You're kind of floundering around thinking maybe you have the right people, but maybe you don't. That absence of data, particularly absence of data on your partners, even if the partners have been in your program forever, because you think you know stuff about them, but you probably don't know everything about where their business is going. 
that absence of data is going to destroy your channel program. It's going to decimate your sales through and with your channel as we move through the next few years. And so really kind of opening that wallet up and saying the high cost of having data, right? Because there's always a cost associated with everything you do, uh, whether it's a portal for your program, data, or the amazing tool from Partner Optimizer, you have to think about the cost of not having that data, right? What happens when I don't? And so as we move through to the next um, slide here, as you think about positioning this and data in partner management, you have to remember that data-driven channels grow faster than they're managed by the gut. Now, look, I know we all like to pride ourselves on managing by the gut, but it doesn't actually work. Data is what optimizes channel programs. Your gut doesn't. And my belief as a professional in this space who's run billions of dollars of channel sales is data from Partner Optimizer can help you track your partner and business realities and performance in a much better manner. And as we think about that and move to the next slide, that much better manner helps you to get more money to run your program, work with more partners, and really get to where you need to go. Now, you may be listening to this and saying, okay, but Maybe I don't have a lot of partners yet to get data on. Well, are you on the road recruiting for partners? Because I've seen you all at events lately. Data is your atlas for that partner engagement, right? So if you create an ideal partner profile, and let's assume that you're at a booth at an event and you actually can quickly run names through the partner optimizer tool, or you can at least have partners answer whether or not they, they are involved in the ideal partner profile, you cannot fall for a partner you know and instead fall for a partner who can grow with you. And that's the key here. You can use Partner Optimizer to run show attendees, create a highly targeted list, or to down select after the event, the 200 people you ran into down to the 50 that really matter because they meet your ideal partner profile. Um, and so as I wrap this up, um, I really would encourage everybody to think about how you use data to not only justify investment increases in your partner program and investment in the channel community, but also to make sure that you are spending the best money you can on the best partners you can for the best results for your business. Because the bottom line is data truly matters for your business. So um, that's it for me, Carrie. Uh, I will turn it back over uh, to the team. Thank you. I'll, I'll speak now, Janet. And that was a great introduction. And you know, that's why you're such an incredible partner, you and JS Group, because from the early stages of our just beginning to innovate and, and launch our alpha and beta of the platform, you've been so helpful and insightful and early adopters in being able to give us feedback that makes your clients more successful. Obviously, our customers more successful, and it's just been a win-win. So this we love working with you. So, and again, forty percent faster to market when we use your tool. So. Exactly. I mean, it's it's a it's a secret sauce that's now being revealed. So, um, but that said, you guys are experts in building ideal partner profiles and understood that and and the roots of that and and how to apply that. So. Thank you. So I will take you guys through a little bit of a journey of how we talk about Partner Optimizer. And since most of you on the call today are channel and partnership leaders, whether in sales, marketing, or overall, you're experiencing these types of typical problems, which is that so much time and energy and resources have been spent on recruiting the right partners, but yet only 5 to, 10, 5 to 20%, if you're lucky, are actively driving revenue. And that problem really has its heart and root in data. Poor data, lack of data, lack of data, visibility into who the partners are in the first place. And almost everyone we speak to has had this problem unless you're an anomaly. Um, next slide, please. So the point we make as well is, and, and Janet was saying this earlier, is that if you invest upfront in the right partners, if you invest in fr upfront in knowing who your partners are, everything else you do in your partner program, all the motions will be better tweaked because look at everything that's going on with bad partners or inactive partners, regardless when you bring them in. You're, you're building strategies with them. You're recruiting and enabling and incentivizing them. You're taking them to ball games. You're co-selling and co-marketing. And that's a lot of time and investment and dollars and resources that are spent on so many wrong partners. And that's what we are here as partner optimizer to, to flip over from a 2080 to an 8020. So slip, uh, flip, uh, 
switch slides, Carrie. So, you know, this is a good point. I, we did want to talk about why this paradigm has persisted. And, you know, candidly, it's there's been so many great sales tech and sales prospecting and MarTech platforms that come to the market that you're probably getting hit up by all the time. But what they haven't done is truly look at the key elements of what makes a partner who they are. What is their fiber? What are their top characteristics? And I mean, if you go on to NAICS to, to search an industry standard to try to find, you know, who are the companies in cybersecurity or cloud infrastructure, you get nothing. There is no MarTech and marketing and industry standards that truly help us parse and profile and find and surface partners who have deeper technology expertise and they all get lumped together. So you can go by generic lists, right? Which we all see and get in our email boxes every day, your, your, your competitors lists, uh, partner locator lists, conferences, but they're generic lists. And you know, if they're not already a best partner with someone else, I don't know why you would think they would be a best partner for you. Like for example, if, if you're going after a competitor's partners, only if only five to 10% of them are driving revenue, the rest are inactive. So don't consider those a great lead list unless you take the time to learn more about those partners. Prospecting tools. Well, they're very limited in the search filters that you can go through and oftentimes only limited to a NAICS code or, or an industry type, which doesn't go deep enough. So they just don't get you all the way where you need to go. Mike, who's with us, is from LinkedIn Sales Navigator and can tell you very specifically that the search algorithms that they put in place just aren't doing anything to rank or sort or, or take your priorities into account. The partner tech, channel tech, great solutions and platforms out there that we are partners with, but they require that you have good partners in them in the first place to really optimize their usefulness. So, you know, not starting with the right partners gets in the way. And then let's say you wanna hire a good channel salesperson. We oftentimes think they come with great relationships, but the who you know versus who you can grow is always that challenge, right? They may bring a great relationship, but the relationships they have probably are not perfect, ideal partner profiles for what you're selling. So, you know, wrapping it up, there really has been no technology or automated process or source of truth of partners out there to help our industry really narrow down and figure out who do I need to talk to now so that I can grow. Next slide. Yeah, so, you know, what we like to do is look at the whole flywheel of the partner ecosystem and partner programs. And in a nutshell, you start with identifying your ideal partner profile. Partner Optimizer helps there. And from that, every cycle of, of partner program management, channel program management can be enhanced and advanced and optimized by having the partner data that we're able to surface for you. So it helps you discover and qualify partners that match your ideal partner profile. It helps you look and see what your total addressable partner ecosystem market is. And whether it's one type of partner versus another, for example, you may be looking at managed service providers or virtual CIOs or MSSPs, or just you know um, maybe security consultants, that kind of thing will help you understand and parse and see how many are out there that match what your specific ideal profile requires. You can zero in on partners for very focused initiatives. Let's say you need to know you want to hit up a group based upon their target vertical or the customer size they're focused on, or they have a certain certification of an adjacent partner you want to co-market together. You can now really hone in very deeply, very quickly in minutes. You can prep for recruitment and performance calls in, in minutes. So, you know, by looking at a profile that surfaces so much data, you can now have a much more intelligent conversation and you can communicate with them and build communications with them so much more easily. Um, you can keep your partner data fresh. I mean, it, it goes on, but we, we refresh the data. So rather than having old data from a year ago or five years ago, we can now tell you what this partner is doing today, what they care about now, where their expertise is now. You can also audit whether those partners are aligned with you digitally, which is an incredible value add because you want your partners to be able to be out there promoting you, talking about your products and solutions. But if you find that they're talking about your competition or things that are totally irrelevant, that's a really important insight that should change your strategy of how you're talking to and, and behaving with or investing in that partner or not. And then as well, you can use this to understand your competitive landscape. 
what the partners out there who are either aligned with your part, your competitors or your synergistic partners are doing, what they care about, what trends are emerging in that way, and, and what types of insights do you need to be prepared to uh, take advantage of? So there's just so much. We'll show you a demo after we talk to Mike, but Mike is going to now talk about how and why uh, what we do is really special and, and enables you to have all this data at your fingertips. So next slide. Yeah, next slide. You want me to talk about this one, Dee, or are you? You know what? I forgot about this slide. This is critical, right? So uh, let me talk about it for a few minutes. So why, you know, before Mike gets into why and how we do it, this is all the data that we bring forward at your fingertips. So neural partner is how we've now coined our data mining brain, thanks to Kerry. And what we do so well is collect partner DNA, uh, all this types of data about the company as opposed to individual people. Because when you're partnering with a channel partner who's going to take your products and solutions to market, it's not just a person that you're talking to. You need to know that they have the skills, the expertise, the same customer focus and insights that you need in order to sell to the same ideal customer together. So again, it's, it's how to grow together as opposed to who you know. And this shows you really what these companies have that you would care about. So partner company type solutions and services expertise and product types, they all build into what you call the partner persona of the company, not the individual. We look at the ICP, the ideal customer focus insight. So what business categories are they focused on? Verticals, customer size and type, and where are they selling? Because if their ideal customer is matched with yours, that's fantastic. If not, let's not spend time with them. Tech stack insights. We want to know which partners are focused on competitors versus adjacent. You may have strategies that go after, in some cases, you need to steal competitors' partners. But in other cases, you want to go around them and only find the ones who are working with adjacent solutions to yours who can add your product on in a non-friction way and move those faster to market. Um, and competencies. Well, it's so important to know if they have compliances they're focused on, what partner program tiers and certifications that they've that they've invested in, because that shows that they've also invested in the things that align to what your product and solution needs to take it to market, and that they would have the skill set to be able to sell and implement your technology as well. And so, Mike, now we can talk about how because that is you know, critical. We get asked that all the time. People say, well, where do you get your data? And so Mike is here to talk about that. Yeah, thanks, Dina. So I work back in the kitchen and we're <laughs> cooking up a kind of hybrid intelligence. So that's not just scraping data. Um, we're mixing the kinds of expertise that we have and channel in partnerships, the kind of expertise that you have in your business goals with a very powerful machine intelligence to come up with something that, like Janet said, is really very new. Um, so basically it works in a way that you might expect. Um, we harvest a lot of the business attributes that Dina was just talking about, and we harvest them principally from the company's web presence so that it's fresh. And when they announce a change, we have it, we can incorporate it into the things that we uh, process. This is as far as most of the other sources of partner data go, just to here. We take it beyond that. We take it to the next step and we make a mental map, like Janet called it uh, an atlas of the, the whole ecosystem. So who is talking to who, who's working with who, what kinds of relationships are going on, which kinds of competencies does each actor have, and this allows us to understand a lot more deeply um, what's going on in the ecosystem. Okay. Um, and with that, we can go back to you and say, well, tell us a, a bit about, give us a sample of your expertise. So that can be in the form of, oh, these are the best partners that we've been working with. Or you can come along with business attributes and say, well, we want a partner who's like this and this and this and really focuses on that. Okay. And that all folds into the ideal partner profile, which allows us to look in the map that we've built 
okay, and find the parts of the map that are going to be most re useful and most um, impactful for you. So a little bit of your expertise, a little bit of our expertise, and a lot of machine intelligence together give us this uh, profiles of relevant partners. So it's not just a list of companies that might match a keyword. It's a list of companies that are most relevant for your specific needs. And those needs can change, right? Depending on what's going on at this time of year or six months from now. Um, so instead of giving you a list of companies, we'll give you um, a network of interrelated and relevant partners. So they, we give you the most relevant partner candidates and we can show you why each candidate is relevant for your needs because we have information about all of these business attributes. And we can show you their strengths and weaknesses with regard to the goal, the needs that you've expressed in your ideal partner um, profile. Okay, all of this enables us to give you, to, uh, enables us to help you create more targeted, faster, and more effective outreach. Because you already know, as Janet said, you have the data in hand to be able to talk better to your partner candidates. Okay, sorry, next slide. So on top of all of this expertise that we've captured from our side and we've captured from your side in the, in the ideal partner profile, what we end up having is a discovery process that's really very, very different. When you buy lists or you need to do a search, a typical search, or even when you use GPT, chat GPT and, and similar kinds of things, you really only get a list of companies, sometimes with contact information, sometimes with a couple of keywords, but it's really not very informative. And it definitely doesn't tell you why the engine came up with those candidates. Partner Optimizer was built exactly to do the opposite. We have, we guide the machine with your partner profile, and that give, allows us to produce a ranked list of the most important to the least important part, candidate partners, and we give a, a profile of why they're relevant, okay? And this allows you to do intentional targeted outreach. You have a custom script right there. You know what you need to ask about because you can identify the weaknesses, the, the characteristics or business attributes that become weaknesses for your goals. So you can talk about that. Okay, that gives us this big shift that Janet was also talking about between having some data, okay, that you have to slog through at a large scale and having what we would call intelligence. Okay, so now instead of having a list, we have a profile, a relevance profile. And the relevance profile is tailored to your needs and to your needs today. Okay, so let me hand it off to Dina so she, she can show you what it really looks like in practice. Sure, thanks, Mike. So what I'm gonna do is I'll share my screen now, if Carrie lets me. <laughs> Great, here we go. Excellent, so I'm gonna give you a little peek inside Partner Optimizer. I'm gonna to try to make it uh, uh, summarize little areas that are like the, the wows and, and points of interest. So you can see here that you have a section where we built searches, one for unified communications, one for system integrators, one for security service providers. And let's look at security service providers, right? So in that search, one of the things that's really cool about what we do is we're able to feed it example partners in the first place. So in this demo, we gave it 16 partners that are already existing partners, and you can see them on the left-hand side. And each of these partners has been part of populating a search query, basically without you having to do anything on your own. So the engine's telling you that within the query, you're seeing 100% of them are security experts, managed service providers, even MSSPs, managed security service providers. And, and even more, they're all talking about, and they all uh, work on IT infrastructure, security, and product types are cloud security, cybersecurity software, information security. And these are just some of the insights, right? It takes you on to even tell you more insights about them that they have in common that you probably have never even thought about. So we take these partners and we let the 
say, how many are out there that look like those partners based upon a query like that? And you can see that within our engine that's profiled hundreds of thousands of partners, it already gave us about 10,000 results that look really strong, of which this many are amazingly strong. We call them excellent, very good, good, and maybe level, but they're all gonna be pretty good prospective partners for what your query looks like based upon that start. Now, if you look at on the far right side, there's a little overview of everything that was added to that query. And you can see all of those different filters that we talked about, the business attributes are here. Now, what I wanna show you next is how one company's profile is actually surfacing data. So within Partner Optimizer, which again, as Mike said, we created a data mining tool that goes out and pulls data from online public sources and particularly their websites to bring back this information and insights. Right away, you can see the top the top attributes that they're talking about, right? And not only did they say one time cybersecurity, but how much, like they're talking about cybersecurity 933 times, right? Engineering industry, 315, government sector, 307. So as you go through all of these different attributes, you can get a pretty good feeling for who this company is and what they care about right up front. You can also see revenue range, employee range, access their LinkedIn profile to reach out right away. And when you get into the in-depth areas, especially for marketing and for sales and really understanding their fiber, it allows you to go very deeply into solutions and services. So I'm not gonna go into too much depth, but right here, let's say solutions and services, we found 230 unique terms in here that are in the query, right? But then beyond what this was in the query, but beyond that, look how much more we've learned about this company and their association and alignment and their expertise in cybersecurity. And as you go through all of the data, there's so much that you learn about who they are and what they care about as a business and how they go to market. Now, one of the very cool things is let's say that we like these four partners in particular and we wanted to refine our search query. Well, I would click view insights and right away it would pop up what's in the query and what's not, and guide me on what terms we may wanna add in because for example, the four partners here are all talking about being a consulting firm. I'm gonna add that in because I wanna find more partners like this. If all four are mentioning security operations section, I'm gonna add that too. And as you go through, you can see what they have in common and maybe there's something anyway, you really want them to be a data analytics consultant. Maybe I wanna refine it that way. So I'll add that in. And so you can do this across every different filter that you have available to you. And you can adjust your search and you can update it right here and then. And it will shift the results right before your eyes. And your partner discovery can continue on in that productive way. You can look at all the partners. You can look at partners that are hidden and reveal them to find net new partners that match your query. The other thing is if you want to go in even more depth, into the search query and you wanna refine it further, you have that ability right here to enter in any of these filters and you can decide on a must, have, a must have, must not have, should have, should not have, and a priority level. And at the bottom of the screen, you can see how the search query changes no matter what you do. So if I were to enter in cybersecurity, for example, you can see how many granular business attributes you could search in order to determine you know, which ones of those belong in your ideal profile and you want to find partners for. Let's say I wanted to go to marketing, right? And I was looking for marketing people. Well, similarly, there's so many options around marketing that you can find partners in the MarTech space or marketing consulting space. You know, ERP, uh, similarly, enterprise resource management and cloud infrastructure or cloud, you'll see how much is there. So we really cover the global ecosystem of potential partners in any technology. And we're always refining and we're always improving it so that you can continue to hone in and find new and more partners as your ideal profile shifts over time and as the industries shift or as your company is acquiring a new uh, product or launching a new product, you can shift the types of profiles that you build so that you can surface new partners. Carrie, I'll pass it back to you right now. I'm going to stop sharing, I guess. Yeah. 
So Kerry, here we go. Looks like we've got some Q and A coming in. I know, Kerry, you're on mute. We do. I am so just sweet. working to get back to that deck. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it's am I back there in yes. good form? All right. Um, thank you. Let me just come up on camera. All right. Um, thank you so much, um, Dina and Janet and Mike. Um, great overview of the problem and great insight into uh, how Partner Optimizer is doing what it's doing. Um, who amongst us doesn't uh, need to be faster and to be more effective and to be more cost efficient? That is what Partner Optimizer lets channel ecosystem professionals do. Uh, so um, very much looking forward to helping you eradicate the partner data blindness that has stopped uh, channel programs from having uh, anything less than 25% of their partners delivering 80% of the revenue. It's time to break that paradigm. And we do that by being, you know, with an average person using something like a Zoom info, 600% faster at helping you find your ideal partner profile, identify them, discover them, and force multiply your revenues. Uh, we make you so much more efficient in finding those right partners and having better conversion. And we do it for less money because it is so efficient in finding who it is that you really should be going after. So 539% lower acquisition costs. Um, those are huge numbers, hugely impactful, very much looking forward to um, uh, working with all of you and talking uh, with all of you. But in the meantime, there are some questions. So let's take a few of those and I'm going to dig down through those and um, feel them out. So let's take a few. And if we don't get to them all in the next five minutes or so, uh, we'll come back to you afterwards and uh, close it out with you personally. So um, let's start with uh, Karen Fazio, who's asking, uh, hey, you know, with Zoom info, et cetera, what do you think about the new intent feature? Um, what is uh, Janet? I see your hand. Take it away. Yeah. So, Go, um, Janet. Okay, so here's what I'll tell you. Um, it doesn't work as well as advertised. Um, Zoom Info's lists are good, but the intent-based feature has created a lot of angst and confusion for folks that I've talked to. There are more data-rich services where you can use your Zoom Info data, but get better results. So what you want to do is think about um, if you want to get, say, 300 high-quality sales-ready leads where the when the person comes in, their intent really is to purchase and they really want to speak with somebody. You're going to spend somewhere between forty dollars to $70,000 a year for that kind of a campaign in mid-market or enterprise. Down market and small business, you're going to spend less. Um, so what you want to do, and I'm happy to take that, you know, uh, Karen, offline with you. I can introduce you to the providers we're seeing. We built about $4 billion in funnel last year. About $1.6 of that is closed already through the vendors we worked with. And um, none of that came through that service. So I'm sorry. Um, I think they have great promise. I think they have great data, but there's um, there's is not yet right. Cool. Thanks, Janet. Uh, someone is asking if this recording will be sent out. Absolutely. It will be available online. Uh, loving the comments that you're excited about this and can't wait to um, share it. Yes. Um, there are case studies online. If you have any other questions, please reach out to us um, with the information we provide at the end and we can, uh, you know, give you more um, individual um, examples. Um, so uh, there's a comment here uh, from Desmond. Thank you. Uh, uh, so what does panel think vendors should do to help their partners, given that uh, you say in reality, the 80 20 paradigm persists largely due to the partner's own business not being able to grow consistently and profitably and deal with a constant shift in vendor strategy and the solutions they bring to market. What does a panel think uh, vendors should do to help their partners? Well, um, I think we can dovetail that, you know, really back to, you know, uh, where is an issue with the partners and where is an issue that maybe isn't a good fit? Who would want to add a little more color there? Who can I swing that to, well, Dina? You want to take that? I, sure, I could. I think Janet as well would have a, a you know yeah. a different angle. From my perspective, if you you're able to profile those partners through Partner Optimizer, 
and leverage that as a point of conversation. And you're able to look at who your best partners are and say, is this partner actually one of my best partners? Do they belong in my ideal partner profile? Should I invest in them continually? If you believe so, then you would be talking to Janet and then talking about how to go and engage them. But first and foremost, you may want to be checking what your best partners look like and your overall partners look like and find those ones that if you find a chunk of your best partners that are all focused on an area that your best partners aren't or that your product isn't, it gives you that chance to see from a higher view. You know, maybe you have 20% of your partners that are really focused on healthcare and they're not activating with your platform. Maybe you need to talk to them and productize what you what you have and are offering them so they can be more successful with your tools. Uh, so, so that's one of the ways to go, assuming that they are a business that is running their business profitably, um, you cannot necessarily help them to run their business, so to speak. But what you can do is help them be more successful with the products you are selling through them. Yeah. Um, and I, I would love to add on top of that. So I agree with Tina. First of all, I would profile the partners for what I'm going to lately call ability to grow. Um, via the partner optimizer tool, then offer my partners a market action planning session and I'd let them use MDF to create that plan. This, this program allows you to use a third party, shameless plug like JS Group, um, to create the right plan for them to actually grow, right? What customers are they going after? How are they going to get those customers? What investments is that going to take? What solutions are they going to sell? How are they going to sell? How are they going to price those? What does the profit margin look like that? Like really put together a market action planning. And the difference between that and a business plan is that a market action plan says, how are they going to go to market and take action on your solution portfolio? Because that's what you're paying for, right? So it's not their whole business plan. It's the go to market for your specific solution. And creating that type of go to market plan helps to eliminate the partner's gap in growth planning with you. So where you have a partner where you think, I think they could do a million this year, right? Or five million this year. But for some reason, they only did 100,000. So it helps you eliminate that gap and it helps you to know what to support in their business. So that might be a series of incentives, a series of marketing campaigns, a series of services or supports, having, you know, webinars, you know, you put together the whole thing. And, and, and the thing about results in the partner community is we too often look at them as a rear view mirror thing. Like, oh, the partner did 2 million last year, like back there. That's not something you can influence. What you can influence is the front looking mirrors, right? And the front looking windshield to say, if we do these things, they can be successful. And then really hone your MDF spends and hone, if you have co-op still, your co-op spends towards those partners that have a written plan that will let them achieve the, the, um, the goals that you want. So it starts with identifying the willing and able partners to, through data, through Partner Optimizer, and then having a plan and executing on it. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, well, I think we are well at time. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll close out any uh, uh, questions that uh, we didn't get to today um, with you individually. I really, again, um, Dina and Janet and Mike love uh, your comments and thank you for your time. Um, please, uh, we will send out this recording. Uh, please feel free to reach out directly to uh, Dina and Janet. Uh, these are their personal cell phone numbers. This is a big deal. We want to talk to you. We want to bring this to life. And in um, true PLA, PLG um, spirit, right? We know that you want to try it, right? And uh, before you talk to anybody, we make that easy for you. There is a free trial out there for you. Um, bring it to life. We'd love to talk to you. So um, it's it's the end of partner data uh, blindness. Uh, what uh, an exciting new era in the channel and um, uh, looking forward to bringing this to life with all of you. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, looking yeah. forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you. If you have any questions or would like further assistance, please contact customer success at partneroptimizer.com. Thanks for watching.